and welcome to the last webinar of 2020 on milk forecast reports. Um, I have Graham here. I volunteered. You volunteered to go through <laughs> this with you. Okay, um, this is the last one. I, it's not going to be. It's not going to be too long. Um, I think this is a really good module. We haven't really covered it much at the workshops, so yeah, I'm really happy that we're kind of finishing the year with this one. So, um, what you need to do is to go to House Head. You need to go to Milk Forecast and Data Entry. Manual Input. Okay, you have three options, and you can basically this is where you can fill in collections, quality results, and payments. You have a setting here um, that you can say whether you want to insert it in kilos or in liters. So I'm going to select liters. And the minimum, the very minimum that you need to tick is payments. But I'll, I'll just show you how it works. So if I select all three, here I'm putting in the, my collections for the month. If I go to next, this is where I can fill in the, the details of the milk quality. And then finally, at the end of the year, month, sorry, end of the year, at the end of the month, I can put in the uh, amount of milk that I sold, the fat and the protein, and then the payments. You do not need to put in the payments. You do need to put in obviously the milk, the fat and the protein, but if you don't want to put in payments, don't do it. So if I just go back, the very minimum that you need to get this to work is payments. So if I tick that, that will take you straight to this one. And so if, if, if this is the first time you're using it, I would say, yeah, just start and put in the end of month figures and then give it a go and see, see how you get on with it. Um, people that are using it do tend to fill in everything and there's quite a handy thing that you can put on the dashboard, which I'll show you towards the end of this, uh, this webinar. Okay, so first of all, we fill in the details and you'll then see that we have these options here. So the first one is data entry, manual input, and as I've just shown you there, that's where you fill in your collections, quality, and the payments. The second one, this is really for reports. So we can look at things like the collection data or the monthly data. So here, if you fill it in, we can see the, the daily milk yields and we can see butter fat and obviously we can see protein. Same thing really with um, analysis and reports. So if I look in here, I can look at the month. I quite like this graph. Um, it can show more than one year and we have the option to select milk, protein, fat. So finally, we get to this point, general milk forecast. And we have four options here. And the first one basically is to show the individual cow and when she's going to calve in this year. And we also do a prediction into next year as well. The system looks and it calculates what it expects to happen. And obviously, you know, it is a prediction. We're, we're predicting what's going to happen in 2021. Um, so some of the cows haven't even been served yet. But what you do need to fill in is when cows are going to be cold, when you're actually going to sell the cows. So to do that, you can find that here in cow culling planning. So these are my cows. I'm planning that these cows are going to leave in January and the, the system will take that into account when it does the prediction. And if you want to put a new one in, so we'll put in um, this cow here. We'll say, unfortunately, she's she's off. So I select her. Then I can just put in the dates. So it's logical they're all going to go on the same dates. Say OK. So she's now added to that list. OK. So back into general milk forecast. As I said, the individual cow, that's how we're doing the prediction. We're basing it on the individual cow when cows are going to be cold, basically. And then here you can look and you can see the predicted yields for the cow in this lactation and in the next lactation. And if you do all that, that will then take you through to here, the forecast. And what we have on the forecast where it calculates a prediction, if I go right to the top, what I like about it is it shows what it thinks you're going to do. And then you can see basically what you did. So it's, it's very clear to see how accurate the prediction is. So here we've got basically what we sold. This was in 2019, and this is what we expected to do. So we have the total amount realized is the actual milk that we sold from the farm, and this is what we expected to do. And then we have the deviation. 
And obviously, the more data you put in, then you can go back and look at previous years. So we're now looking at is 2020. Um, what I can see here, obviously, is that we're only, in terms of December, we're kind of halfway through. So there's still some milk collection data that needs to be entered in there. And again, we can see what we did the previous year, in 2019, what we've done so far, and then what we expected to do. That then goes all the way through to give us a prediction here for 2021. You also have a graph. So the red line was for the previous year. We have the blue line here. This is what we expect to do. And the green line is what we actually achieved. And on this farm, there's something a little bit going on, slipping a little bit. I can see that in June and July. And in August, they're a little bit under the, under the prediction. We go back to here. Now, the way that it actually does the calculation, it's, it's important that you check this in properties. The program is calculating these figures here. It's calculating the calving interval, the average dry off period, average age at first calving, and the average gestation period. You can override it to hand steer it if you select manual, but I would always, before I start really looking at the data, I'd always check these figures here and make sure I'm happy with them. And the Manual adjustment, if you're always kind of 5% out, you can put a figure in there which will just adjust it. So you're kind of, um, yeah, you're, you're hand stirring it a little bit like that. And also obviously your culling percentage, that's, that's important. So check that and make sure that you're happy with that. And if you do all those things, I think for not a great deal of work, just putting in the, the monthly sales of milk, monthly payments, putting in when cows um, you're planning to cull them, I think really have a go with it, generate the reports. I think it's, I think it's, a, it's a really good report because you can see quite clearly how accurate the predictions are. That then gives you confidence. And it's the sort of thing that, yeah, we hope to stimulate your interest on this and that will then hopefully mean that you'll give the help desk a call and say you want to give it a go. Finally, we also have the, the summary that's sitting here. This is a printed off report and here we've got the cows that were due to be culled. Just one final thing. Um, you are able to, if you put in the, the milk sales, there is a setting on here, which I keep blooming forgetting. Here we go, milk collection data as a graph. When I log on to some systems, I see that people are really using this, so you can just see the latest uh, milk collection data. Okay, so that's a, that's a final one of the year, which I can't believe. Um, that's the milk forecast module. It's a module that I think definitely we'd like you to have a look at. Um, and as I said, uh, please give us a call and we, we can help take you through it because I think that can be that can be very helpful. So any questions, um, you can type them in. It's a very super short survey at the end. I see we've got quite a lot of people logged on. Can we just check if we've got any calls? Or just to be honest, just, just, give us, just give us a call, I'd say. Yeah. I can't see any questions coming through. So, okay, please give us a call and we'll log in and uh, we can take you through it and uh, we'll go from there. When do we start again, Em? So our... Uh... First webinar next year is on the 6th of January and it's on the vet checklist. Um, you should have our Christmas newsletter in your email mailbox if you can't see it. Um, and yeah, if you do have any other questions on this, do give our help desk a call. Okay. We just wish you yeah, best wishes for 2021 and we'll speak to you in January.